Hi, my name's Kim. I'm a licensed and nationally certified East Asian medical provider. I wanted to talk about avian flu because we haven't heard much in the news about it. So I want to talk about what's unique in the United States with avian flu. I want to look at what made this virus difficult to get under control in the United States. Then let's look at the current situation here. And then last, let's see where we've gone from here, how the government and how the farmers, how they're learning to work together. Let's see what's unique about the avian flu here in the United States. The thing that's most unique is here in the United States, it did something different. Avian flu usually has seasonality. So after spring, it usually goes away until about September. Here in the United States, it stayed around in poultry until either um, early June, July. So we had it here much longer than, than usual. And the other thing that was really unique is it jumped into cattle. Nowhere else has avian flu jumped into cattle. It's just here in the United States. So those are two things that make avian flu really unique. And I'll put a link to the World Health Organization, their latest situation update, which shows that the seasonality of this is changing. And it's becoming more like, you notice the flu after COVID, it, we were, we're getting sick all the time. It used to be this period in the summer where everything was gone, everything was easy, and now we're just sick 24-7. And this avian flu, when it mutated in 2021 in Israel, it started showing some of those same characteristics that we see in COVID. And if you want more information on that initial jump into birds, this new mutation, I have an episode out here. I'll put a link up here so that you can click on it or it'll be in the video description below, but it'll talk about the initial outbreak and what was going on at that time. What are some of the difficulties with getting this virus under control? Well, there might be a number of reasons why we're having a hard time getting this outbreak in cattle contained. And probably the most important is that we don't know how this jumped into cattle. So lacking that knowledge, this virus could be spreading to new herds right now, right underneath our nose, and we wouldn't know. There's another aspect that could have led to the difficulty in containing this outbreak. And that was the initial pushback from industry against government regulation and that struggle for autonomy in all areas of that industry, from the farmers, from the, the cattle industry, from the vets that support the cattle industry. So I have a couple articles here that, you know, you can look at that just kind of highlight what was going on and some of the uh, distrust that was going on when government first came in. And then let's just say that maybe government wasn't as transparent as they could be with their communication. And that lack of transparent communication might have made it much more difficult to get assistance and involvement from experts outside of the government. And without that expertise, maybe we lost some time in identifying this virus quicker. So those seem to be the three things, and I'll put some links to a couple articles that address some of the concerns that other scientists had with the information that the government was releasing. It wasn't comprehensive. It had so many holes in it that it wasn't incredibly useful, and it was very time-consuming to try to get through that. And just some of the, some of the other concerns that they might have had. So those are the three things that might have made this virus much more difficult to contain. What's the current situation right now? Well, if you're curious what the current situation is, there's a CDC report which shows you how many herds have been infected. And we're up to 191. 
it's the uh, number seems to be going down. We're active in just a couple states right now. The state that's having the biggest issue is Colorado. So most of the outbreaks are happening in Colorado. If we look at what's happening in poultry, we're really not seeing any outbreaks in poultry right now, which is a really good thing. We're seeing that this strain here in the United States is different from the strains in the other countries, and it has jumped into people. The first cluster where more than one person got sick happened in Colorado last month in July. So nine individuals were infected on two poultry farms. This one strain that's jumped into cattle has a lot of flexibility and it's jumping into a lot more mammals. So they're seeing it jump into cats. It has a really high mortality rate in cats. And this can be your house cat that never goes outside. Somehow they're getting that. Or cats that are around sick cattle. But the other thing that I found really interesting and concerning for me is that it's jumped into mice and rodents. And if you remember, the black plague was spread by rats fleas on rats. So who knows? My first episode, I talk about the original transmission of the Savian flu. And I think that's really interesting because it gives you some insight into what was going on at that time. And it really brings up some curiosity for me because the strain of avian flu in cattle, the flexibility, it's it likes being here all year round. It brings up some questions for me about that initial strain that happened in Israel. And I talk about that in my episode on the initial outbreak. Let's talk about where we've gone from here. We've seen that the government has become very proactive. They have put in programs that you can sign up for and you can get reimbursement for the monies that you're losing. This is really expensive for farmers. If your cattle show up with avian flu, that means that your milk, it doesn't go to market. It stays on, on your farm and you have to figure out ways to dispose of it. I've also run across a couple reports that say, it is causing some mortality in cattle. So not only are you losing your milk production, you might lose your cattle. And the other thing that's happening too is not all the cattle are recovering. So this is a very expensive infection for farmers to have. <laughs> you know, when it first started out, I think they thought the cattle would recover and this thing would go away and that would be fine. So let's not get too much government intervention because, you know, they can be kind of like relatives where you invite them over and they never leave. So there was a lot of concern with, you know, how is this going? How's this interaction going to happen? And I thought it was really interesting to watch how the government handled this. They didn't push themselves on the farmer. They said, hey, we're here if, we, if you need our help. And one of the things that happened is Colorado is where we have the most outbreaks. And they're having a really hard time getting rid of it in Colorado. And it's bringing down, I think, like 50% of their farms right now. So there's a lot of concern now, now that we can see that this can be really dangerous for farmers, there's a lot more concern from the farmers on how do we keep this contained and working together. And I think one of the things that the government did really, really well is they didn't change their stance. They said, we're here to help. Here, here's some programs we have. We can come and we can help you figure out how to sanitize your farm. Working with you, we can maybe figure out more ways to help you keep biosafety on your farm and with your workers. And that seems to be working really well. 
what I'm seeing right now is there is a lot more cooperation between industry and with government because this this is a concern. What's happening in Colorado, we don't want that to spread and happen in other states. And I think that's kind of where the farmers are. That's kind of where government is. And I think they're trying to figure out how to work together and keep their antagonism at bay. One of the things that I can say is it does seem to be working. I can tell you when this was found in March, I really had to wonder about that avian flu inactivated virus in dairy because we inject ourselves with an inactivated virus to produce an immune response through vaccines. My thoughts is that even consuming an inactivated virus could be a problem. And what was bothering me in clinic was there were some of my people that would get this horrible gastritis. They thought they had food poisoning. It'd last for a few days and then it'd be fine. One of my clients had swelling on one side of their face and they had rash around their stomach. It would bring up these weird digestive symptoms. And after a while, I started to think that maybe that inactivated virus wasn't as benign as we like to think it was. But who knows? You know, we, we really haven't done any testing on that. But what I can say is the more involved the government has gotten into testing and making sure that the products going into our food supply do not have avian flu virus in it, the less I'm seeing that gastritis thing. So who knows? You know, there might not be any equation there whatsoever, and there might. Who knows? So that's kind of where we're at with avian flu. Now, if you want to get more information on some of the holistic or bioorganic methods that we're doing in clinic to help keep ourselves safe, then check out Health Hub. There's going to be a link up here and you're going to see there's a link at the end of this video. In Health Hub, what we do is we talk about some of the things that we're doing to protect ourselves or to deal with some of the health issues that we're facing today. There's also a monthly real in-person meeting on Zoom where we talk about some of the health issues that we're facing and what we can do about it. And there's email alerts, which I send out that tells you about some of the things that may be a caution that you might want to think about when you're protecting your health and your family's health. And then there's just the basic emails, which tells you some of the new things that you can find on the online virtual training for Health Hub. Okay, until next time, I'll catch you on the other side.